Well hello there and welcome to this video on simplifying algebraic fractions. Now hopefully you already know how to simplify a normal fraction. So if we have 8 over 12, how would we simplify a fraction? Well we know that we can find what's common to the top and the bottom, what factors common to the top and the bottom, and then divide by that number. So 8 and 12, they both have a factor 4 in common, and that allows us to divide the top and bottom by 4, and then we end up with 2 over 3. Now exactly the same principle applies with algebraic fractions. We've got to see what's common to the top and the bottom, and we divide the top and bottom appropriately. So, what do we have common? Well, in terms of the numbers first, we've got 7 and 21. So they have a common factor of 7, so we could divide top and bottom by 7. So if I divide 7 by 7, I just get 1. And if you're just left with 1, you don't need to write anything at all, because 1ab is just ab, isn't it? And then when we divide that by 7, that we can replace with 3, because 21 divided by 7 is 3. Have we got an a common to the top and the bottom? No, we don't. There's only an a in the numerator, so we just leave that as it is. But do we have a b common to the top and the bottom? Yes, we do. So we can divide top and bottom by b, and we can just put a cross through it. Now, all we're left with now is an a at the top, and at the bottom, we're left with just the 3, and therefore we've simplified the fraction to that. Now let's do a bunch of examples. We've got firstly 2x squared y over 8xy. Now you don't have to do this, but it might be helpful to write x squared as xx, because x squared just means x times x, and that's just going to make it slightly easier to see what cancels. Now let's always start with the numbers, so the 2 and the 8, what can we divide them both by? Well, they both divide by 2, so we can cross that out when we divide by 2, because it just becomes 1, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we're left with a 4 at the bottom, and that's 1 at the top, but we don't need it because 1xxy is just the same as xxy. What about the letters? Do we have an x common top and the bottom? Yes, we've got an x here and here, so we can cross them out, because we've divided by x. Whenever you cross something out, you're dividing by it. Um, and then we've still got that x there, but there's nothing left to cancel it with, and that y, we can divide both top and bottom by y. And all we're left with at the top is just a single x, and at the bottom, we're just left with 4 and nothing else. Just as a sort of bonus one here, let's say that we had um, 2x over 8x squared. Now, as before, I could write that as 8xx at the bottom. Now, we can cross out um, one of the x's, and then we can divide top and bottom by 2. So we can cross that out and cross that out and replace it with 4. However, because there's nothing left at the top, we do need something there. It's not 0. Well, 2 divided by 2 was 1, wasn't it? So this time we do need the 1 because there was nothing else there, and that would therefore be, well, we're just left with 1, and at the bottom we've got 4x. So just be careful. If you've crossed everything out, you've actually got a 1 left because you've divided by everything. Now let's do the second question. We've got 3x plus 12 over x plus 4. Now with many of these simplifying algebraic fraction questions, you need to factorise the top and the bottom first. So, how do we factorise the top? Well, we've got a common factor of 3, haven't we? So we can factorise out the 3, and then 3 times what is 3x? Well, it's just x. And 3 times what is 12? Well, it's just 4. And then, can you see that we've got a common factor of x plus 4? So we can cross that out, and then we can cross that out. And remember, there's nothing left. You just put a 1 there. So we've got 3 left at the top and 1 left at the bottom. 3 over 1 is just 3. In general, when you have a 1 in denominator, you don't need it, because anything over 1 is just itself, isn't it? So we're just left with 3. Right, next question. we got x squared plus x over x squared minus 1. Again, we need to factorise the top and the bottom. So at the top, can you see we've got a common factor of x? Always check for that first to see if you have a common factor. So you have a common factor of x, brackets, x times what is x squared? Well, it's x. And x times what is x? It's just 1. 
And at the bottom, that is the difference of two squares. So we've got a difference of two things, and they're both squared things. x squared is something squared, and 1 is a square number. And remember, when you have the difference of two squares, you have two brackets, one with a plus in the middle, one with a minus in the middle, and then you do the square root of each. So the square root of the first term, x squared, the square root of x squared is just x, and so we put that as the first term of each bracket. And then what's the square root of 1? It's 1, so we put that as the second thing of each bracket. And then you see what we can divide by. What can we divide the top and bottom by? Well, there's a common factor of x plus 1, so we can divide by that, and we're just left with x over x minus 1. Next one, question 4. We've got x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 2x. Again, we factorise the top and bottom, so we need, in this case, we need two numbers that add to give the middle number and times to give the last number, because it's in the form x squared plus something x plus something, so we use this method here. What are those two numbers? Uh, well, 2 and 1 add to 3, and 2 and 1 times to give 2. So therefore, we can factorise it as x plus 2 and x plus 1. And then the bottom, this is a common factor one, so we've got a common factor of x, and it's going to be x times x plus 2. And then we see we can divide top and bottom by x plus 2, and we're just left with x plus 1 over x. Next one, we've got x squared minus 4 over 2x squared minus x minus 6. So, again, factorise top and bottom. I always start with the easier one first. Well, that's the difference of two squares. So you need two brackets, 1 plus, 1 minus. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. Just put that there. Now, this bottom one, in a previous video, I showed you a method of splitting middle term, but I'm just going to intelligently guess the brackets in this case. So it's probably going to be a 2x and an x, because that multiplies out to give the 2x squared. And to get the minus 6, these two numbers are going to multiply to give the minus 6. So it could be like 3 and 2, etc. Now, in general, you find with these questions, because we know that something's likely to cancel, we know here it's probably going to either be x minus 2, so it cancels with that, or it's going to be x plus 2 to cancel with that. So let's just say I thought it was plus 2. I'm going to put in small so I can cross it out later. If that was the case, 2 times what gives minus 6 would be minus 3. And let's just check that works. So we get the 2x squared, we get the minus 6, as expected. We also get minus 3x plus 4x, but that's plus 1x, which is wrong. So in which case, I reckon it's going to be minus 2, and that's going to be plus 3. And let's just check now we get 3x minus 4x, which is minus 1x, which is right. And at this point, we see, well, we've got an x minus 2 common to the top and the bottom, so we can cross them out, and then we put x plus 2 over 2x plus 3. And note, by the way, that we no longer need the brackets around these because we're not multiplying it by anything else. Now, here's a somewhat awkward one that I found in a GCC mock paper. We've got 3 minus 4x minus 4x squared all over 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Now, we've got a negative quadratic here because the number in front of the x squared is negative. And what I recommend doing is to just factorise out minus 1. And if we do that, we then minus 1 times what would be minus 4x squared? What would be 4x squared? And then that would be plus 4x, because then we have minus 1 times 4x is minus 4x. And that becomes minus 3, because minus 1 times minus 3 is plus 3. And that makes it easier to factorise, because generally we, we like to factorise positive quadratics, where the number in front of the x squared is positive. Uh, and then the bottom here, let's try and factorise that. Well, it's going to be 2x and x. Uh, they go times to give 3, so I'm going to try minus 3 and minus 1. Let's just check. Well, we get minus 6x minus 1x is minus 7x. That works, so I'm going to make that big. And then let's try and factorise the top. We've got, leave that minus 1 there, two brackets here. Now, 
we can use the bottom brackets as a clue to how the top factorises, because I reckon one of these will be the same as one of these. So we've got the minus 3 here, they've got to multiply to give minus 3. Now I'm going to guess that it's 2x minus 1, so it matches this. And we've got uh, also, that's going to be 2x, because 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and minus 1 times what is minus 3, which is going to be plus 3. And let's just check that, you get the 4x squared, and we get the minus 3, they both match, but we also get 6x minus 2x, which is indeed 4x, that works, and then we can see that we have a common factor of that, so that just becomes minus 1, 2x plus 3, over x minus 3. And if we want to tidy that up, we could write that as, well, if we times top and bottom by minus 1, minus 1 times minus 1, that just goes to leave 2x plus 3, and we times the bottom by minus 1, that becomes minus x plus 3, or we could write that as 3 minus x. So that makes it nice and tidy. That is a super awkward question, that one. Right, let's do some test your understanding questions. We got this one here. I want you to simplify x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x plus 2. And then I also want you to do 3x squared minus x over 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. You may want to pause the video now to have a go at these. Right, let's do it. We can factorise out the top. Well, this is a quadratic of the form x squared plus something x plus something. We need two numbers that add to give the middle number 4 and times to give the last number 4. Well, those two numbers are 2 and 2, aren't they? 2 and 2 add 4, 2 and 2 times to give 4. So it's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 2, all over, oh, x plus 2, and we can see we can divide top and bottom by x plus 2, and remember, if you've got nothing left, you just put a 1 there, but the thing is, if it's x plus 2 over 1, we don't need the over 1, it doesn't make any difference, so it's just x plus 2. And then this second one is a bit harder, at the top, this is a common factor one, so we've got a common factor of x, take that out, factorise it out. And then what we're left with, x times 3x gives 3x squared, and x times minus 1 gives minus x. And then the bottom, we can use this as a clue to how the bottom factorises. So I'm going to do two brackets, and surely one of those two brackets has got to be 3x minus 1. So let's put 3x minus 1. And then the other one, well, 3x times what is 6x squared? It's got to be 2x and minus 1 times what is minus 5? Well, it's plus 5. Let's just check that. Uh, we get the 6x squared, which is right. We get the minus 5, which is right. We also get 15x minus 2x, which is indeed 13x. So that's right. And then we can see as a common factor of 3x minus 1, and that leaves us with x over 2x plus 5. Now, just to finish off with, I want to give an example of a common mistake that students make. So what they would often do with something like this, they see there's an x squared common to the top and the bottom, and they cross that out to leave just x plus 3. Now, this is very, 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 very wrong. To absolutely do not do this. And let's reflect on what the student has actually done when they cross these out. Well, what they've actually done is they've subtracted x squared from the top and the bottom. So when you have x plus x squared, if you subtract x squared, it gets rid of that x squared. And you have 3 plus x squared, and you subtract x squared, it gets rid of that to leave this. But the thing is, with fractions, we can't subtract a number from the top and the bottom. If we had, say, 3 quarters, we can't just minus 1 from the top and the bottom to get 2 over 3. That's not the same fraction. So you can't cancel by subtracting or adding you can only cancel by dividing.